uh, looked like their offense had showed had showed up. They started off this season while they just only gave up just a just a mere three points with their first few opponents of, of Murray State, Savannah State, and Wake Forest. But they did, you know, and even though those teams do not really strike fear into anybody, it just seems like that they they look they look pretty good after after playing against Clemson, and we're gonna see what they're gonna get the chance to do uh, after this season. Number five is Georgia. Number six is South Carolina, and number seven in the uh, in the AP Top 25 poll, one of the one of the teams that had a very impressive win last uh, this week was Kansas State in their win over Oklahoma. Uh, Kansas State, they look, and they Bill Snyder, he's trying to get the program back to where they should be, right back when he. he had his first tenure with Kansas State where they were rattling off victories and you know they were actually a very good legitimate threat in the Big 12 to uh, at that time to Nebraska and and Oklahoma at that time well right now with this with this win against Oklahoma they got themselves into the top 10 in both polls and they really look pretty impressive this season as long as they continue to uh, keep it up. They might be a little bit of a dark horse to put themselves into the national championship picture. We will see about that. I mean, right now, I don't think nobody's really touching Alabama or anybody that comes out of the SEC. And probably, you know, Oregon looks very good. But right now, Kansas State, they still they have a decent shot of making it. Uh, I'm looking at the AP Top 25 now. Number 8 is Stanford. Number nine is West Virginia, where Geno Smith has really looked looked like a Heisman candidate, and he continues to put himself into that situation now. And also number ten to round that out is Notre Dame, where they had a thirteen to six win against against Michigan. They won very ugly, but yet they put themselves into a very nice situation with that one. Uh, to round out the top. 25, Florida's at 11, 12 is Texas, 13 is USC, 14 is Ohio State, 15 is TCU, 16 is Oklahoma, 17 is Clemson, 18 is Oregon State, 19 is Louisville, 20 is Michigan State, 21 is Mississippi State, 22 is Nebraska, 23 is Rutgers, 24 is Boise, and 25 is Baylor. So we're also talking about a little bit about the matchups that are probably going to happen this week. Let's do a little bit of a foreshadowing with those games. Here. And right now, one of the games that really does stand out is we're going to get a chance to finally get a chance to see what uh, Baylor play against West Virginia in a matchup of two ranked teams. Baylor just got to number 25 after a wild win against the University of Louisiana Monroe and West Virginia has really stayed along nicely. They're in the top 10 right now, but this will be their first taste of Big 12 action. And I know it seems weird to see that West Virginia is in the Big 12, but uh, this would be their first taste of that action. We'll get a chance to see how they how they do and how they play. Uh, another good game that's going to happen this week is going to be Ohio State and Michigan State, where Ohio State has looked a little bit sluggish in some of their games this week, this year, but they're right now they're 4-0, and that's the most important thing. Of course, they're not going to get a chance to go to, to represent the Big 12, the Big 10 title game uh, this year in Indianapolis, because of their uh, because of uh, their their sanctions, but right now they look they look they're four and zero. That's the most important thing. Urban Meyer is is really trying to get them into the uh, into the into the good play here. And Michigan State is at three and one right now, but their running back Le'Veon Bell is playing pretty well at this time too. Uh, another good matchup. Is going to happen this week is going to be between Oregon State and Arizona. Oregon State 
had their first game of the season against Nickel State rained uh, rained out as a as, well basically wiped out of the wiped out because of Nichols having to deal with the hurricane earlier this earlier this month. But Oregon State has really shown themselves a pretty good showing this year by knocking off two ranked teams and was in Wisconsin and in UCLA last week. Well, Arizona, they got to try to get that uh, 49 to nothing loss off of the taste of their mind to Oregon, and they got to try to bounce back in, in this one as well. So, for right now, also some other good matchups that's, that's coming up soon. Uh, the Stanford Stanford Cardinal taking on Washington this Thursday on ESPN. We'll also get a chance to talk about Texas against Oklahoma State. Both teams are coming off of a bye week. They're playing against each other this uh, this Saturday on Fox. And yes, and then we also have the Wisconsin and Nebraska game on ABC on Saturday night as well. Uh, we will we'll go ahead and take another break at this time. Uh, once again, this is the Gafford and Brown Show. Thank you very much. And we're back with the Gafford and Brown Show. Uh, we already talked about a little bit of the college football. We also talked about the NFL action that was going on uh, of this week. But let's talk about a little bit about the MLB and the playoff race that's coming along the way in this one too. Uh, right now, with the addition of the second wild card, we got five teams now possibly putting themselves into and well putting themselves into the playoffs in both leagues. And right now it looks like right right now we see ourselves having some very good pennant races coming along the way in this one too. At this time, at this time, looking at the different races here, uh, in the American League, your division leaders are Texas, the New York Yankees, and the Chicago White Sox. Uh, Texas is at 90 and 62. The New York Yankees are at 88 and 64. And the Chicago White Sox are 81 and 71. And we have just 10 more games left in the season. And just imagine how chaotic it's really going to be. Right now, it looks like Texas and the Yankees are trying so hard as to try to get that number one slot. But, you know, we also have some very good wild card races as well. Uh, Baltimore and Oakland at this time are the top two teams in the wild card and in the wild card chase. But we also have the uh, LA Angels, the Tampa Bay Rays. And the Detroit Tigers still trying, still creeping along and trying to put themselves into the situation of making it to the playoffs. And in the National League, the Washington Nationals have already clinched their, clinched themselves a playoff spot, and they have the best record in baseball right now at 93 and 60. But we also have the Cincinnati Reds and the San Francisco Giants who also clinched their division and right now they're trying to get that top spot along with the Nationals this 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 year. Uh, Atlanta looks like they're going to get at least one of the two wild card positions. They're six games ahead. They're six games ahead of that second wild card spot between them and St. Louis. So it looks like right now Atlanta can be a sure lock and they're tr still trying to battle against Washington to try to get the uh, National League East title but also we have the St. Louis Cardinals at, at the second holding down the second spot in the wild card race we also have the LA Dodgers right behind them just three games behind the Milwaukee Brewers have been impressive lately they're three games behind as well the Arizona Diamondbacks are four and a half Philadelphia is still showing them showing some light they're five back of the second wild card spot, Pittsburgh has been fading, but they're still six and a half back. At San Diego, they're just a one loss 
or St. Louis Cardinals win away from being eliminated, but yet they're still hanging on by a little bit of a thread. They might not make it, but right at this time, they have not been officially eliminated from the postseason. Uh, right now, another interesting thing that's happening into in the MLB at this time has been Miguel Cabrera's chase of the winning the uh, Triple Crown. Right now, he's trying to get the bad and average title. Uh, he's pretty much, if not, if he's not at the top, he's near the top with bad and average, home runs, and RBI. And nobody has won the Triple Crown since 1967 when Cal, uh, Carl Rostrzemski did it. So we saw we we did get, get a chance to see. Um, we might get a chance to see some history happen this year, but it's been a little bit of the, it's been a little bit of a topic that if he wins the triple crown, should he get the MVP honors this year, or should he not get the MVP honors? We will see about that. Um, many people have been have been saying that Mike Trout, based on the advanced uh, statistics, that he should try to get that, but. My, my feeling is whenever you have somebody that does very well in all three categories and whenever you have somebody that, you know, does something that's, I mean, this is the triple crown that we're talking about and the instance that it has not happened in the last 45 years, to me it just makes it feel like that maybe he should get a little bit, I, my, he's, he gets my vote for being the MVP this season. Um, I know a lot of things that are also going to have to do with it is we're going to see uh, how do the respective teams, you know, do in trying to make it to the playoffs. Detroit's still fighting for the playoff spot. Same for the Angels. And right now the Angels, they're a little bit closer into the playoffs than Detroit. So that may have something to do with it. But my feeling is this, that if somebody's, you know, trying to make that triple crown, trying to get in there, I have a feeling that you know he should be Miguel Cabrera should at least get him uh, at least get a very good consideration of making it to the MVP and he would be my MVP in in my book. So taking a look at also some of the other statistics that are happening here to. That he's doing well. Uh, we got, you know, um, a little bit of a, a little bit of a situation here with Melky Cabrera, where it looked like he was going to win, that he might get a chance to win the bad and average title based on, you know, based on him being suspended for a while and having him having a comfortable bad and average lead, but yet he decided to not pursue that. Based on him, uh, based on him being suspended. So right now it's going to be between Andrew McCutcheon of the Pittsburgh Pirates and also Melky Cabrera's teammate, but supposedly of the of the San Francisco Giants. And they both are in a very good race of trying to get to the, get to the bad and average title. Andrew McCutcheon right now is at is hitting 336, while Buster Posey is having a 332 mark this season. Uh, looking at some of the other statistics in the National League, Ryan Braun, he's really showing himself very well that maybe he did not, uh, maybe he wasn't a, uh, uh, a product of the uh, performance enhancing, uh, the performance enhancing issues that he had last year. He has 40 home runs and 108 RBI, and he's, and he's basically at the same level as he was last season, which Maybe it just says, maybe he's still, um, maybe he's trying to do, uh, maybe he was right after last season, and, you know, who knows. Also, uh, looking at the American League, we have, uh, right now, we also, we were talking about uh, Miguel Cabrera's uh, statistics line. Right now, he's tied for the lead in home runs with 42. He's tied with Josh Hamilton, who also has 42 home runs. Uh, he's in a comfortable lead in the RBI by 10 over Josh Hamilton. And right now, he's just trying to get that bad and average title. And he's leading the bad and average by 8 percentage points. So 
it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to get a chance to do.